Hello everyone, this is Duan. This week we're going to look at what is IndexedDB. So let's get started. Okay, so IndexedDB is basically a client-side database that is commonly supported by and built into the browser we use today. Similar to local storage, it also persists data across sessions. You can think of IndexedDB a more advanced or more versatile local storage. And it is commonly used to build apps that support offline features. Because of that, it is used in, together with service workers. Okay, so let's talk about the basic workflow when using IndexedDB. The first step, similar to other databases, you need to connect to the database. For IndexedDB, you can use the IndexedDB.open, specifying the database name and the version of the database. And this will trigger one of the three events, upgrade needed when local version is lower than the version that you're trying to connect. The error is when the database failed to connect and success when connection is successfully established. And based on those events, you can start perform database initialization, like building your object stores and continuing modifying the database. And there are also a, another step you need to be careful of when working with IndexedDB is to listen for the version change event and together with the blocked event to handle a parallel upgrade pitfall. So basically there could be a situation where a user is trying to open a two version of your IndexedDB. That's going to have problems. You want to listen to that and maybe suggest to the user that you need to restart your browser or close the tab to make sure newer version of IndexedDB is installed. But the next two steps are basically what the developers will be doing most of the time when working with IndexedDB. So first is using the database transaction and object store to perform modifications to the database. For each of those transactions, you will be doing handling of transaction results, success, and errors. Okay, so let's talk about the basic concepts when using IndexedDB. So IndexedDB, first of all, you have what's called a object store. If you're familiar with other database types, you can think of object store very similar to uh, collections, tables, so it's basically where the data inside the database are organized into. So for IndexedDB, the object store is able to contain a list of key value pairs. And this object store can only be modified during the upgrade needed event. So like tables in your other databases, you want to perform uh, creating tables or modifying tables during the migration. So this is the same for index DB. The other terms that you need to get familiar with is the transactions. If you have worked with other database before, it's the same meaning, a group of operations that should either all succeed or fail. Also, in addition, the operations or the operations that performed to the index DB must all be made using transactions. So everything you need to do, uh, whether that's one step or multiple modifications, you need to use transactions for your index DB. The basic method for that is uh, database dot transaction specifying which object store you want to perform the operation and the type of your operation. So the type can be uh, read only, uh, basically just reading the data and read and write. For IndexedDB, you'll also be doing error handling with event delegation. So what this basically means, because every operation is in the transaction, whenever a request, um, whenever a request fails, the transaction automatically cancels and this error event can be catched by all three levels. So in IndexedDB, you have the request level, which is the lowest level. You have 
multiple requests for transaction, for example. You can also listen to errors at the transaction level. And you can also listen to errors at the database level. You don't have to do it just in the request level and you can do event delegation to other level as well. Okay, so one important feature in IndexedDB is the searching. And there are two ways you can do searching in IndexedDB. One is using the idb key range and basically using the keys because everything is in key value pairs idb key range basically have uh, several methods but they are pretty much similar you can specify upper bound and lower bound of your key value and it will get everything in the range of that key the other way you can do search is using the index so here are two examples the first example is what we talk about the idb key range specifying the upper bound and the lower bound and we're using the object store get all method to get everything within that range okay and for index there are actually three steps the first step is you need to create the index during the upgrade needed event. So at the start, for example, here we have a basket of balls with different color and we're creating a color index. We're using that color index later to create color index variable. And we're using that variable to get the blue color, for example, using color index dot get all and specifying the blue. So you can think of index as additional grouping to object stores. In the earlier example, we have a basket of balls that's being grouped together. And you can also break it down into smaller groups based on color. When we're trying to break them down, we're basically indexing them into different groups. Okay, so there are also other concepts uh, that's pretty common to database, such as delete. In IndexedDB, delete is also very straightforward. You can just use the object store delete key and object store clear to delete individual items or delete everything in your object store. Okay. And additionally, you can also use something called a cursor object in index DB. What cursor object does is instead of when you're trying to get everything together, you will be storing a list of items in memory. And this memory can get very big depending on the size of your data. The cursor object helps saving memory. Instead of looking at all items that you get from the search result it actually looks at each items individually so you don't have to worry about memory being exceeded one last thing one last thing that you need to know about when working with index db is what's called a promise wrap you can find it in the npm package what promise wrapper does is turning those requests are on success on error to a promisified manner. So you can do async await together with try catch block to handle the errors in a block by block manner. So it makes more sense most of the time for developers. Last note, I want to mention that the index DB does not work with private browsing. This is intended because in the private browsing the browser will not save any data to the local machine so index db is a client-side database and we're saving data to the database so it won't work together with the private browsing so keep that in mind when working with index db okay so that's a basic introduction to index db and all the key things that you need to know when getting started so if you're interested in learning more about index db i'm going to attach resource links in the description below so make sure to check it out that's it for this video thank you for watching i hope to see you in the next video Bye bye